Hi, I'm Chad with Move for a Guitar. This lesson is from our series Chords for Beginners. In a previous lesson, I showed you how to play an open C major chord. In this lesson, I'm going to show you another version of an open C major chord. So in a previous lesson, I showed you how to play this version of the C major chord. And if you didn't watch that lesson, you should watch it first because this chord, this version of the chord is much more common than the one I'm going to show you. So it's better to get this version down and then come and learn this one if you don't have the other one down. And there's a link in the description where you can go watch that lesson if you need to. So I'm calling them versions, but it's really a different voice. And a voicing just means that it's the same chord, it has the same name, and all the same notes, but the notes are in a different order. And all that means for this chord, with the first one that I showed you is like this. The one I'm showing you now, I'm going to add my fourth finger on the first string, third fret. And it'll sound like that. So it's still all the same notes, but they're in a different order. So I'm going from that open E string, and then I'm going to a G for this version. Now you don't have to worry about what voicings are or anything like that. Just know that it's the same chord, same notes. The notes are just in a different order. You're fretting them in a different order. And the two chords are totally interchangeable. It just depends on what sound you want. This one has a little more open, little darker sound with that open E on the first string. This one has a brighter sound because you're adding that high G. So it just depends on the situation you're playing and what you want in that moment. But like I said, this version, the first one that I showed you in the other lesson, is more common. So learn that one first and then come and learn this one. So the fingering for this chord is the exact same as the other C major chord, but except for the fourth finger, but I'll still go over it with you here. So you have your third finger on the fifth string, third fret, your second finger on the fourth string, second fret, and your first finger on the second string, first fret, and then your fourth finger goes down towards the floor to the first string, third fret. So it's all like this. And with this chord, you're going to block out the sixth string with your third finger. So you're just going to lightly reach up underneath this sixth string and touch it just so that it doesn't ring out. It should sound like that. It shouldn't sound like, or you shouldn't be bending it or getting any note to ring out. Just lightly with the tip of your finger, reach up underneath the sixth string and touch it to keep it from ringing out. And that way, you don't have to worry about hitting that string. You can still strum through all the strings. And the reason you take that note out is just because it gets a little muddy with it in. So if you leave it in, the chord just gets a little muddy. So it's better typically to take it out and mute it out just like that. And with this chord, you're going to really want to be on the tips of your fingers. You know, you're going to have a good arch right here in your knuckles. Make sure they're not bent back like this. Otherwise, you're going to be blocking other strings. And just really play on the tips of your fingers. This one's not as much on the tip just because it's reaching up underneath to touch this string, but it still is on the tip and it still has an arch here. And you can see how much my knuckles are bent. Nothing's bent back like this. And with this chord, you want to be as close to the front fret wire in whatever fret you're in as possible. So in the third fret, this is the third fret right here. My third finger is up close to this fret wire. It's not back here in the fret. And this finger, my finger, my second finger is close to this fret wire. It's not back here. And the same for all my fingers. That's because any note that you fret on the guitar, you want to be as close to the front fret wire as possible without being on top of it. And that's because the closer you are to this front fret wire without being on top of it, the less pressure you have to push down to make that str string or note to ring out. If you're back in the fret, you're going to get buzzing and you're going to have to put a lot more pressure. So it's better to be up towards the front of the fret, to, towards the front fret wire, and it'll get a nice crisp sound without having to put as much pressure down. And that's not possible for every single finger of every single chord that you play because with some chords you have fingers that are in the way of other fingers. But with this chord, you can get every finger close to the front fret wire. There's no other finger blocking it from happening. 
and make sure that your thumb is straight up and down it's not sideways like that typically you're going to have a nice little bend here in your wrist a little space between your hand and the neck but everyone's hands are a little different and my hands touching right here on the neck but this part of my hand isn't so everyone's hands are a little different it depends on the size of your hand the anatomy of your hand just make sure that you're on the tips of your fingers have nice arches here in your knuckles and that your thumb is straight up and down not like this although it could be a little lower on the neck it just depends on your hand so when you think you have that chord just strum through make sure it sounds like that if it sounds like anything like that you just need to go through check each string and keep adjusting until you can get all the notes to ring out clearly so that's another version or voicing of the C major chord the open C major chord if you like to get the diagram for this chord you can click the link on the screen and it'll take you to an e-guide that you can download for free and in this e-guide it has this chord but it also has a whole bunch of other beginner chords that'll be really useful for you to learn it just gives you a bunch of options for different chords and different versions of chords and it'll really expand your knowledge and give you tons of options for playing chords and songs and along with the chords I give you a bunch of options for chord progressions so I take the chords that are in the e-guide put them together into sequences and create chord progressions out of them so that you can actually hear them in a more musical situation and you can learn the chord progressions to see what chords sound good together and also get ideas for different chord progressions that you can create on your own that way you won't just learn a whole bunch of random chords and then have no idea how to use them this will show you musical situations that they can be used in and really expand your knowledge and help you as a beginner so if you like to get that e-guide just click the link on the screen and you can download that for free